A football is kicked at ground level with a speed of 18 meters per second at an angle of 31 degrees to the horizontal. How much later does it hit the ground? All right, let's go ahead and draw a little picture so we make sure we know what we're actually talking about. This is the ground, the ball, nice simple dot, and goes on the parabolic uh, trajectory kind of like this. It leaves the ground with an initial speed, that is to say the magnitude of the total velocity vector is 18.0 meters per second, and it's making an angle of 31.0 degrees with respect to the ground. And we're supposed to figure out at, uh, how much later does it, does it hit the ground. Okay, so let's keep that in mind. In fact, we got our picture here. What do we want? We want T. Okay. So conceptually, what do we have? Uh, it's motion. It's constant acceleration motion. Remember, all we have is gravity pulling things downward with an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. Uh, this time we're doing things in two dimensions because this is projectile motion. So we might call this, uh, broadly speaking, projectile motion. Okay. The equations within projectile motion, there are two sets. There's a set for the x direction and a set for the y direction. Um, I can list it once, let's say, in the y direction, and then you know immediately what the x equations must be. So there are, there are the three, y is equal to the height in the y direction is equal to the initial height plus the initial y velocity times time plus one half y acceleration times time squared. The velocity itself evolves according to this equation, initial velocity plus acceleration times time, and then that funny quadratic equation that relates the squares, the velocities, delta y. Okay. And the same equations hold in the x direction, and remember, they're independent equations. Okay. So we have some knowns. We might as well list the knowns for, um, for projectile motion. One is you have gravity. That's the only source of acceleration. That's all you need to worry about. Minus g. In other words, minus 9.8 meters per second squared. The acceleration in the x direction, assuming that we get to neglect air resistance drag, any, any other forces in that direction, this is approximately zero, at least in, in this analysis. Hmm, what else do we have? We have an angle with respect to the ground, let's call it theta, that's the 31.0 degrees, and we have the initial speed or the initial magnitude of velocity at 18.0 meters per second. Okay. Uh, I suppose we also know that we're starting from the ground, so y naught is equal to zero. And that should be it. Okay, we want t. We want t when the ball lands on the ground. In other words, let me go ahead and write this, when y equals zero again, not at the first initial time, but the final time when, when it lands. So I'm looking at the set of equations, and we want time, okay, apparently only these first two equations, we can call them one and two, this one's three, we want to use one of these two equations to figure this out. Now, what we could try to do is use them to figure out t, but you notice what we don't have is the initial y velocity. We have the total velocity, the magnitude of it, but we're going to need the y component. So we have to remember how to take vectors and break them up into x and y components. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's draw a bigger picture of what this looks like. Remember that when you generically have some velocity vector with, with the magnitude v naught, this can be broken up into perpendicular components, the x and y component, the base, let's call this part the x component of the velocity, and this is the y component of the velocity, and generically this will be the angle theta. Okay? So remember, what you end up creating here is a right triangle, and therefore, you can relate the three sides of the triangle to each other with sine, cosine, or tangent. We're going to ultimately want to get the y velocity, uh, the component of, of, the, uh, of the velocity in the y direction. So one way to get at these equations, which you may have memorized by now, is to remember that, for example, if you divided 
the y component over the total component. That's the opposite side over the hypotenuse of this triangle, so that is equal to sine of theta. In other words, the y component is the total magnitude times sine of theta. You put in 18.0 meters per second times the sine of 31.0 degrees, and you'd find that this is 9.2 7. It's either a 7 or a 1, but hopefully it won't affect our results too much. That's our initial y velocity. So the good news is, now that we look ahead at, at the equations we have, we can, for example, use this first one. I think that will be best because we know the initial y and we know the final y as well. It's going to be 0. So that means we're going to know this, we're going to know this, now we know this, and we have this as well. So the only unknown quantity in this equation is the time that's what we want. So let's go ahead and use that. And let's stick with the pink because I'm enjoying that. So let's use equation one. The final y position when it hits the ground, that's zero. The initial y position was zero. Plus the initial y velocity, that's the 9.27 meters per second. I'm going to just put parentheses around that to make it look prettier. Times the time plus the 1 half the y acceleration is the minus 9.8 meters per second squared times t squared. Now you realize in general when you solve this equation for time it's quadratic and it's a little bit of a pain in the ass, but it simplifies here nicely when the initial and final uh, y positions are the same. So you notice what you can do, assuming that the time is not zero, of course it's not, we don't want to ask a question about what happens at the beginning, we want it at the end. So you can divide by the time because we know it's not zero, in the whole equation, and so what we learn is 0 is equal to 9.27 meters per second uh, minus 9.8 over 2 is probably 4.9 meters per second squared, although I didn't check it, so you'll have to check for yourself, times the time. Now we can solve for the time very simply, and it turns out the time is approximately 1.89 seconds. We'll circle our answer and just stop for a moment and think about it from your own experience. When you kick a ball or throw a ball, does it take a couple of seconds to hit the ground. Yeah, that sounds about right, so I think we're good.